data structure or you can call it data model right so we see uh, you know certain apps which are already there which have already been created we can see those things and we have also discussed in you know uh, one of our previous sessions that salesforce is not only for using the apps which have been provided it's also about creating our own apps right so it's not that i will only you know uh, restrict myself to using the sales and the service app that has been provided by salesforce i can go beyond that and i can start using some uh, other apps like uh, I can start using certain other apps like I can create my own app for HR, I can uh, create my own app for learning management, I can have an app for order management, invoice management, payment management, there are so many things right. So it's not just about the, uh, it's not only about managing the, uh, what do you call it, C sales and the CRM part, alright, so you can create your own apps as well. So before we can create our own apps, we need to understand how an app is created. Okay, what are the different components that we have? Okay. Now before uh, I get into the components of Salesforce, I want to discuss a framework with you, which is called MVC framework. Anyone who can tell me what is an MVC framework? Okay. So there is this uh, application framework which is called MVC framework. Anyone who is aware of what is an MVC framework? Anyone who has heard of MVC framework? MVC framework? No? No one knows? Okay. MVC framework is an application framework which has three layers. Okay. An application that has three layers. What are those three layers? M, V and C. Alright. So what is this M, what is V and what is C? That is what I am going to tell you. M is the model also referred as data model or the database. V is view or the front end interface C is the controller ok so this is MVC framework which has a database at the back end it has a front end user interface and it has a controller what is this controller controller is what connects the front end with the back end the set of logics that connects the front end with the back end we have to understand this thing we all use monster.com we all know monster we use monster <clears throat> we might have you know posted uh, jobs or we might have uh, you know posted uh, put our resumes into it so what do you think what kind of a structure it has it has an MVC structure. There is a front end view that you get to see. In the back end there is a you know, database of all the jobs and there is this controller which controls the logics. When you, you know, try to search a particular job, so there is a certain logic which works there. Alright, let me just open monster.com for that. So you see there is an interface, front end interface that you uh, see here, right? Some jobs are being displayed and all. Then it is connected, this front end interface is not independent, it is connected to the back end database. All their jobs are listed in the back end database that they have, right? And whenever you try to search something, let's say you want to search for a Java job. When you put this keyword and you click on this thing, what happens? There is a connection which is set between the database and the front end and there is a logic which runs and then it returns the result. Right? Based on that the front end gets changed. It starts showing you certain results. So these logics are stored in the controller. Correct? So any such thing, any web based application which has a back end database 
or any web based portal has an MVC framework. So Salesforce also has an MVC framework. Okay. So we have seen that if there is a database at the back end, there is the front end view that we get to see the pages and the controller. Definitely there are controlling logics which are controlling all the activities in Salesforce. Okay. So those things are there. All right. Now let's start underst uh, understanding the components of Salesforce. So the different SFDC components that we have are first one is an app. Okay. App is a part of view. Okay. App is a view component, which means it's the front end component. It controls the front end. Uh, let me log in into Salesforce. So how do we log in into Salesforce? Go to salesforce.com, click on login. Right? No developer.salesforce.com. Just go to salesforce.com and then click on the login uh, button and then go ahead and put your login ID and password. So for the login ID password. So uh, here is the login ID and password. All right. Okay, so uh, we see this thing, the apps listed, these apps are basically the front end component. So app, when you, you know, select a different app, only the UI gets changed. Okay, it has got nothing to do with the back end. So this is a component, apps are the components in the front end, in the view part. Okay, sales, call center, if you click on call center, you will see the tabs get changed. Okay, so these are all front end components. Apps and uh, apps. Indeed, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, not able to see the screen. I mean, it's still actually. Now, now can you see it? Now can you see it? Yeah. Is it a notepad? No. This is Salesforce uh, login. It, it's a notepad, right? Yeah, I can see now. I can see. Okay, fine. Okay. So uh, these apps that you see, they are the front end component. Okay. So when you change the app, the front end changes. What changes in the front end? The tabs that you get to see there, they, they change. Okay. Uh, you click on marketing, you will say, see a different set of tabs. If you select call center, you will see a different set of tabs. Right, the set of tabs is getting changed. Now what is a tab? What is a tab? So for your understanding, an app is collection of tabs. Okay, tab is what? A button that connects to a database object, object means table, okay, or web page. So a tab is a button basically. Whatever tabs you see here, these are all buttons. This is a button, this is a button, this is a button, right? The way we have tabs in a website, if you go to a website, you will see there are certain tabs, no? about us, home, this, that, all that stuff, contact us. So these are all, you know, tabs. A tab is just you know connected either to a database table in the back end. A tab will either connect you to a database table or it will connect to you connect you to a web page. This web page can be internal or external. 
what is internal and external now internal web page means salesforce web page within your salesforce org external web page can be anything it can connect you to google.com it can connect you to yahoo.com facebook.com so that can be an external thing internal will be uh, you know internal salesforce uh, url where you want to connect so these tabs can connect you to internal or external web page or a database table so both these things are the components in the front end okay now what are the components of the uh, model so these both are view components then what are the model components model components means the back end database components the back end database comprises of first thing object database is formed of what collection of tables right so object is basically a table of data okay so this is a table of data so we have a table for accounts and then we have a table for contacts then we have a table for opportunity so for everything we have a different table of data okay now when we are talking about a table table comprises of fields right which is basically column in a table so what does a field mean field means a column so if i am talking about this let me take an example if i am talking about a table for accounts so if accounts is the table name name can be a field industry can be a field uh, type of the account can be a field phone can be a field and fax can be a field this way huh? so these are all fields so this is all what we have seen yesterday we have already done you know field mapping and all that stuff so we understand what is a field and all so to enter the data you need to have that table there in the back end so all these data entering uh, you know uh, import and all that stuff that we were doing all those tables are already there okay. and third is the records or rows of data the actual data which gets entered so this is what is there in the back end so in the back ends we have the tables the collection of tables each table has a few fields and each table has certain records or rows of data okay in the front end you have applications or apps which are collection of tabs and tabs which are buttons so that is what we have in the front end so there are a lot of uh, other components gradually we'll get into that but you, we are good to start our you know uh, discussion using these five okay there are other components front end as well as in the data model we'll gradually get into that okay so at this point of time i think we are good to start on this so now try and understand how an app is created think about an app uh, and how it is you know uh, completely configured and you know designed and made uh, available to the end user so first thing what would happen first thing you need is the database uh, in the back end right let's say i ask you to design an app on salesforce uh, for customer relationship management okay and your app has a table for accounts and you have another table for contacts for example these two tables okay for contact you have first name you have last name you have email you have title and you have phone let's say these are the fields that you have in the contact so now there are two tables in the back end table number 1 which is i'll use the terminology object here okay table is something that we don't use in salesforce table and object are same but i'm going to use the terminology object because that is what you should uh, be aware of okay so now i have two objects in the back end accounts and contacts okay now if i have accounts and contacts <coughs> what will i need to do i need to create these two objects in the back end i need to create all these fields in the object 
okay but that is what is going to get created in the back end that will be there in the back end how will my end user see these so what i need to do i would need to create a tab one tab for account and the other tab for contact i told you know these buttons so these buttons will then connect you to the objects because these objects are in the back end the end user cannot see it can you see any of the database tables from here does it show you anything no so front end i need to have those buttons ideally i mean this is what i am uh, <clears throat> discussing that if i have two objects then for connecting to those objects if i want to interact with those objects i need some front end component i cannot directly interact with it so for, you know for an example uh, if you have some you know uh, if you have a fan in the uh, in your room do you directly operate the fan or you have a switch board and then is, there is a switch uh, to operate the fan that is how it is right or if you have a light uh, so do you directly you know enter you know uh, operate that or you have a switch so that is it i cannot directly operate the fan i need a switch this tab acts as the switch to get connected to the back end database object same way for contact also so because i have two objects i need two tabs also in the front end okay and i need one app call it my crm i need one app and i will call it my crm okay now this is the app which is going to be you going to be used for displaying these two tabs i told you what is an app collection of tabs so when the user selects this app my crm he gets to see these two tabs when he clicks on one of these tabs he gets connected to the object and the app is ready is it simple do we understand the you know architecture basically everyone clear on that part so that is what has been done now if you go to the sales app it displays you a few tabs you can see there are a few tabs it will show hello yeah can you all hear me yeah Sorry, you are you the connection loss okay so uh, now if you see this app and try to understand whatever architecture i have explained you you click on the sales app it displays you a list of tabs right these are only buttons what you see here is just a button this connects you to the back end table there is a table called or there is an object in the back end which is called campaigns click on this button or click click on the tab this connects you to the campaign object then you are able to enter data into that object right you can click on that or you can view all the data in that object click on all active campaigns and click on go it will show you all the records so basically what is happening clicking on that particular tab connects you to the object now you can see the data in that object you can edit them you can uh, create new data in that object so everything can be done now all right so the logic is pretty clear and in the back end what do we have 
So I cannot see the backend database directly from here. They do not allow us to see the database. However, if we want, we can definitely look into the data model or the data structure. Okay. So let me uh, look into I, uh, can you all see my screen? Can everyone see my screen? Okay, great, nice. Thanks, Narayan. Okay. So, <clears throat> now what happens here is, uh, we cannot from here, we cannot see the database in the backend, but we can see the data model. What kind of a data model or what kind of a data structure is there in the backend database. So let me try and see campaign lead account contact opportunity from campaign still opportunity. How you see that? You just need to go to setup and then go to your schema builder. So go to setup and go to schema builder. The schema builder will show you a list of all objects which I don't want. I just want to see a few objects, right? So which all objects, what all, you know, fields, everything. You can just select one object and try to see that object. Account is the object, these are all the fields in the account. Got it? Now select one more, let's say campaign. So. Campaign is another object. Campaign here. All right. So one more object that we have here is the campaign. One that I have here is account. Right? Same way if you want opportunity to be here. Let me put it in this side. So this is the backend data data model, right? So there's an object. These are tables, okay? Which table? Which all fields are there? And what are the data types of those fields? Like opportunity, there's a field called account name, amount, close date, contract created by current generator, whatever. Account table, there are, there are so many fields. This table. Fine. So this is the connection in the backend. This is how the backend database tables look. So you can see this from schema builder. Okay. Got it? Clear on this? Now we are going to take a small example and uh, you know we will design an app from our side. Right. Everyone, everyone set? Okay. So, uh, everyone is clear with this? Now let's do in a small example. Okay. To go to schema builder, you just have to go to setup and then go to schema builder. So go to setup schema builder and this will show you all the objects which are present in the database you can just select the ones that you want to see here all right now let's uh, design a small example and uh, we are going to do you know a nice app development here uh, let's say our company, we, we are a, a company, we all are part of the company and we are managing our CRM on Salesforce. Okay. Try to understand this. We are all managing our CRM on Salesforce. So that is going pretty fine and smooth and everything is fine. Now, you know the owner of the company or you know our boss actually wants us to man manage HR M 
also on Salesforce. So this is expected out of us. Okay, he says human resource management should also happen on Salesforce. So we already have uh, the CRM, the client relationship management happening on Salesforce and for that we have the standard apps. Okay, there's this terminology which we are going to use a lot in Salesforce on a standard. Standard refers to whatever has been provided by Salesforce. And custom refers to design by us. So whatever we have designed that will be custom. Okay, so it can be app, it can be a tab, it can be object, it can be field. For everything you have standard custom. Standard is what was designed by Salesforce. Custom is what was designed by us. Okay, and it can be used in every context for app, object, field, page layouts, pages. So everything. Okay, profiles for everything. <clears throat> so just keep these terminologies in mind, standard and custom. So for CRM, I have standard apps. I already have sales app, service app, marketing app. I'm pretty happy managing those things on using the standard apps. Now we are asked that, okay, fine. Human resource management should also happen in Salesforce. Okay. The company wants that the, you know, human resources data should also be managed over Salesforce. Then what will we do? We do not have any such app available within our Salesforce. Salesforce did not provide us for human resource management. So this is where we will go ahead and design our custom app for human resource. Alright. So this is where we are going to design our custom app for the human resource. Alright. So now <clears throat> basically designing an app first and the most important thing is the data model because this is the base of the app. Actual app context is in the database. Whatever I see from the front end that is just you know connecting those back end points uh, you know bringing the, the connectors in the front end that's it. But the actual thing is the data model right what all objects I will need what all data I will need to put into it what all fields will be required right so whenever we get this kind of a requirement now practically speaking whenever you get uh, this kind of a requirement from a client uh, since you guys are you know uh, learning that development uh, program so you will receive these kind of requirements from the client at times okay uh, they would come and they will tell you that uh, you know we want to ma manage HR information here. We want to manage our orders in Salesforce. We want to manage our, uh, you know, some other information, inventories on the Salesforce. We want to manage our production on the Salesforce, right? Production management. There are so many things which can happen, right? Why I'm talking about <clears throat> something which is not CRM because CRM thing we have already seen, we have understood, we understand that very well, right? So if you are required to design a CRM, you can simply look into the Salesforce standard app and you know you can try and copy a lot of things from here. But if you are required to design something else, how will you start working on that part, right? So let's, you know, uh, consider that we are the team and we'll have to design this HR app for the client or for our company. Okay, so we'll start with the data model. To do, to do the data model, you should open an Excel spreadsheet open an excel spreadsheet and start thinking what all objects will be required so quickly you know this is uh, you know an activity which we are going to do and uh, we are going to discuss it so i want quick suggestions from any, everyone that uh, what all objects should we have here in this uh, app what all tables of data we need to store Employee think of it sorry Okay, employee name is a field. What will be the uh, table name there? Employee name will be a field of one of the tables, which should be employees, right? Table name should be employee, right? And out in that table, there should be one field called employee name. Then there should be another field called date of birth, phone, email, that sort of things, right? Okay, great. So, 
first table that Vijaya suggested us is employee definitely because it's about human resource management so you have to track all the employees so in employee what all uh, data will we track name uh, date of birth title or you know, information that is working on apart from this employee ID is what someone suggested that's correct which department the employee works for that's correct what date else joining. Uh, it will be good if you guys uh, can speak uh, that thing date of joining yeah because I am not able to see the chat window again and again date of birth date of okay, employee ID date of joining absolutely correct what else come on be active yeah data um, employee salary budgeted salary Salary. Okay. Address. This is completely your app. So whatever you guys want to put. Address. Okay. Address. So do we have just want to have one field for address or we want to have a city and state and country thing also? Of course. No. Address one. Address two. Address three. Address one. Address two. Address three. Or city, country. Oh, that's oh, city, state. Okay. City designation designation we have title already put one. title huh. phone, number. phone number personal code. email ID code. zip code okay uh, uh, phone alternate alternate number. alternate number alternate phone very good email and alternate email yeah. What else? Father's name? Uh, when it is um, next to title, I think we need to have the reporting manager. Reporting manager, okay, very good. And personal details also? Uh, say name or father's name, mother's name, or spouse. Okay. Okay. Let's just keep one of those fields. Father's name. What else? Okay. Uh, positions could, uh, could be uh, another uh, 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 object. Position. I want everyone to participate. No one should be sitting quietly. This is a very interesting activity. Yeah. Position is what? Uh, title position. Same thing. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, in terms like employee, uh, it's a table one and the positions can be a table two under HR uh, to track okay. the positions so available. With one more object, right? Yeah, that could be one object where we can track the open or uh, uh, vacant positions within the organization. Okay. Yeah. So we will get into that thing also. And uh, before we get into this, uh, you know, uh, coming, uh, you know, getting to more tables, there is one more thing that you should do. Fine. Human resource management when a client tells you, so we are actually now you know working as if we are on a real time project, we are you know thinking from that point of view. So when uh, my client tells me human resource management, now do you think human resource management is a small area, it has got several wings no. right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, let us <laughs> define the scope for this, okay, first of all let's try and you know de define the scope, what is expected out of this app, what all this should do, right? So for not just for this HR app, for anything, okay, uh, whenever your client says that, okay, fine, this is the kind of an application I want, we have to, you know, uh, get a clear idea on what exactly is the, you know, scope for this app. So let's think of what all things can be put here. So one is definitely the employees managing the employees information plus their uh, PTOs, paid time offs of the employees that is what you need to manage here. I'm just I'm defining a few things. Uh, their learnings, how many learnings they are required to do. Huh? Attendance. Attendance. Okay. Okay. What else do you think we should be managing? Performance. Uh, any, any leaves? 
Yeah, leaves will come under this PTOs. Paid time off. Working hours. Working hours. Ah, uh, working hours should be connected to the attendance. I think. And uh, tax payments. The reimbursement. Structures. Ah, the finance part I actually do not want to get into because uh, that will uh, lead us to a bit of trouble. But that can be the second phase, okay? You, you definitely, you know, uh, uh, the expenses or the expense and uh, reimbursements. Okay, so expense and uh, reimbursements and uh, uh, if, if you, you know there are any tax declarations and the tax payments uh, which are to be done and all that stuff. Huh? Pay slips. So that part should uh, become the next phase of it. Okay. Uh, payrolls. So this part uh, should go into the second phase of it. Now this is your application. Okay. Some of you will just go till here. Some of you will, you will go you know one level ahead. One or two of you might finish off the entire thing. And it's not in a day. It might uh, you know end up by the end of this training program. But it's just you know a matter that you know how much you focused you guys are. I will you know discuss initial things on th on this app, and then I will start you know getting into the other things. You will continue to work on this app, so that is your de dedication, right? So that's now your responsibility. So let's uh, start on this thing. So we have defined a few things. Now employees we have talked about. Okay. Now uh, someone suggested that we need to have an object called positions. Okay. Let's have it. So what will be the fields here? And anyone who feels that they, we should not have a you know object called position can also suggest that thing. So if someone is suggesting something and you think that that is not required, you can you know uh, discuss we that thing. We can say arc structure, arc structure, you know, so that we can define uh, the people reporting to him and the reporting manager. Okay, that's fine. Uh, reporting manager we have uh, defined. Uh, positions is what uh, we are thinking of. Do we need positions to be think, in an uh, object? Yeah, positions are most related to the department. So if you go for positions, we need to assign the departments uh, and other stuff. Okay. Positions, Jeet is all about uh, the current vacancies we have or uh, we, if somebody wants to refer someone for uh, current positions available with the organization. Um, so we can go for recruitment uh, object. No, not recruitment object. So position is what uh, you know. Uh, is it the job title? I uh, what we are talking about, or is it uh, you know the open position? Something is something where HR posts the jobs available uh, with them. I mean the uh, requirements with the different department they can post here. Okay, so that is what you are talking about. Okay, so. Uh, yeah. This recruiting. Yeah, let us uh, in the huh, let's just uh, skip this recruiting uh, related thing here. Uh, let us make it to the internal employees. Okay. Let's try and add internal employees. That recruiting thing will be a different uh, app. So that will require another few things. So I think we can skip that part. What else do you think uh, we need to have here? Apart from employees. Staffing. Staffing. No, not staffing also. Staffing is not within your company's HR management, right? You are running a company, you, you have your employees, I want you to manage your employees data within uh, Salesforce, right? Now, why would you uh, take care of staffing there? Staffing is something which an external company is doing. So why would you take the head up? I think we can add up to uh, uh, the salary details, the remuneration details, uh, you know, the taxation and Blah, blah, blah. So related to employee, this is what we need, only the employee table, that's it. So have a look at the scope of this app. Related to employees, this is the only thing that we need or do we need something else? We can show the employee benefits which is company is giving to their employees. Okay. So we can track uh, employees previous organization details. Okay. Or its uh, academics also. Mm -hmm. 
so that should also come under this employee object only maybe highest qualification we experience can have, we can experience. have personal we can have personal details in one table and uh, the rest like uh, different table okay so uh, which which of these fields you want to move to the other table So the depart okay department we can have it there in the person and then you know the reporting manager can we move to a different table where it defines uh, his direct reports and also you know the all the level you know all the way up high so mm -hmm. that we can okay. so basically this is going to be the base table uh, base object uh, if you guys feel that uh, you need two different objects for it you can just think on that. Uh, so this employees is going to be the central object for uh, this entire app, right? You will have employees and around employees you will have everything else, right? Let's say an object for PTOs, okay? So a PTO should have an ID, it should have a start date, it should have an end date, it should have an applicant who has applied for that PTO. In fact, applicant should be here, start date and end date should be here. Okay. And then you should have uh, status of the PTO, uh, whether it is approved or it is still pending, sent for approval, right? Uh, apart from that, what else? What else do we have? Uh, travel. Work, work travel. Again, let us look into the scope. Basically what is happening, you guys are focusing less on the scope or are you, you guys are not reading this and you are coming up with things which are beyond the scope. If the client asks you to, you know, give ABC and you start talking about XYZ, then what will happen? So oh, that is the thing what is happening. Are we considering travel thing here? Expenses, we talked about travel, reimbursement, expenses, these things will be in phase two. Can we focus a little more on this area? That to one by one. Employee info, then PTOs, then learnings. So uh, that is what, uh, that is where we are struggling now. Right? We are thinking of things which are to be done in the second phase. Uh, can we consider here medical, uh, some, something related to medical backgrounds? The blood group or... Uh, definitely, definitely. That is also a type of information of the employee. So if you go for learning, so we can define the uh, how many internal training process the employee attended. No, we'll get into learning, but before that let's talk about PTO thing. What else do we need in PTO? Think, you know, uh, focus on the PTO and think of it. Is it okay to track the PTOs in one table? These fields are okay or do we need something else? We'll get into the learning part next. Okay. We thought about the employees. Now let's th think on the PTOs. Blood group that you said that can go to the uh, employee information. Uh, any health history that you want to maintain for employee, this can be again employee information. Now we are track, talking about the PTOs or the OFFs. ID of the PTO, applicant who has applied for the PTO, what is the start date, what is the end date, what is the status of the PTO. Is that okay? Shall we move is on? Is that for PTO? Huh? Sorry, what is that? Reason for the PTO. Reason for the PTO. Okay, very good. And who will be the approver? Approver, yes. Who is going to approve the PTO, right? So these things uh, look okay. So I think uh, one object we have and then we have the second object also. In case something else comes into mind, then we'll add into it. Okay, now let's think of the learning management. Now let's get into the learning thing. So uh, all suggestions related to the learning thing can flow in now and while you are discussing these things try to consider your uh, you know own uh, employment 
learning experience, you know, how they used to have those things and all that stuff. Can we add visa status on employee? Put a visa status, okay, that's absolutely fine. Done. Okay, for learnings, what do we need? Certifications uh, completed or uh, uh, training uh, asked by the employee or training required. So first thing I feel is uh, the courses, right? Yeah. A list of the training programs that are provided by the company, internal, external. So course will have an ID uh, type, whether it's internal or external, uh, a name of the course, it will have a name of the program. Uh, credits. How many how many credits you get for that learning? Duration, okay. Ajit, uh, should it not be dependent on the, the department in which uh, uh, the employee is, uh, uh, you know, employee belongs to? No, this is a complete. This is an object which will hold all the courses, which will be the courses object. Then you can, you're not going to create two different objects for two different departments, right? So all the courses will be listed in this object. Depending on the employee's department, he will pick up it, uh, you know, a course. Okay. So or you can, if you want, you can mention which department the course is apt for. That is also a good idea. That is that course. Whether it's P or paid. Sorry, whether it is P or paid by the organization, or it's free from the organization, or it will have to be paid. Okay. Now the courses is going to be the list of programs. Okay. Let's say uh, managerial skills, presentation skills, communication skills, negotiation skills. So these are the programs. Okay, which will be listed here. Now you will have to have another object to track all these courses done by the employees. Learnings. Okay. ID of the learning, employee, which employee did the learning, the course which was done and credits accrued by doing that training uh, course. Date, start date of the learning, end date of the learning. Does it make sense? Anyone, any other suggestions please suggest? Yeah, we will track that uh, a particular course has been asked by employer, requested by employee. You see, there will be a, a two type of program. One which HR is organizing from themselves and one is which is asked by the employees. Okay, so put it, put that in learning. Same thing. The ones uh, status uh, should be like, uh, in status we can have that, uh, you know, segregation done, that the ones which have been asked to do and ones uh, which have been voluntarily chosen by the employee. What that thing? So instead of having, uh, you know, one other object, we can have just one more field to distinguish between the ones which are asked to be done and ones which are, uh, you know, which have been chosen by me. What do you say? Correct? Okay. Ajit, I guess we need to have that is separately because we need to also cover uh, that part whether, whether that ask uh, thing has been completed or not. See, in learning we are actually tracking the things which has been already covered because we are providing the credits. Who told you we are tracking only things which have been covered? We are gonna, uh, you know, whenever someone has enrolled for a learning for a certain course, that has to be hmm. there and uh, the status will be uh, pending, in progress, completed. So the same learning, when someone has enrolled for a learning, that will become pending. When uh, it is going on, that 
time it should become in progress and if he has completed then it should become completed no don't we think so and then where, where we have tracked whether it has been asked or voluntarily done mm, put one more field here um you know just put it uh, a field name uh, or type or something and uh, option should be selected or advised something like this okay the point is just for a small thing which can be managed using a you know a pick list field we cannot go and create two objects that way we end up you know having too many objects that is the reason why we have pick this thing i just want to uh, such you know do this thing where this course has been either advised or it has been chosen by the employee so for that distinction we cannot just go and create one more object okay all right so that's it what else people who have not yet given any of the suggestions please uh, you know put a few more suggestions now try to add on certain things will you just you know quite so far Uh, this can be covered in learning. Who has actually uh, covered that course, or who has presented, or who will, who was the actually mentor for that particular course under learning's part one field? Who sorry, who has? Uh, uh, who who was the presenter, or who was the trainer for that particular course under learning? A field could be uh, who was the trainer for that part. So the ID is one employee is Rohit Sharma. Course is uh, sales post training. So uh, trainer will be uh, Mr. G. So could we cover that thing under learning? One thing. Ah, uh, we can we can cover that part. But I'm just thinking, uh, should that be a part of the course? Have it if yes. it is a certain course and it is covered by a certain trainer or a certain manager or whatever. actually uh, we can't uh, predefined suppose uh, uh, x is not available y can take that course particular on particular that day makes sense okay that's fine good thought can we add grade for the learnings okay absolutely we can this is your app i have already told you guys your app the way uh, jeet can can we add can we add as internship for the learnings anything a course or internship on that what uh, what is that internship thing like uh, on the on a particular course we uh, we have done any project or internship no need of that i am asking you uh um, project or internship if it has been done I think uh, yeah. In case we have that sort of thing that okay, uh, you know, if you have what level of course you have done, have you done a project or just a, mm -hmm. an internship or you just complete? Okay, it includes in that. I think. Ah, yeah. uh, so you, we can have a field there, but we are talking about small learnings here. We are just talking about you know yeah. a one day, two day learning here. A company will not send you for okay. two months learning, right? So they would be oh, okay. just oh, yeah, yeah. one day or four hours of learning. So that is the kind of thing. Uh, okay. okay. we can we cover the timing details also in learning duration of the training particular timing slot time time slot 2 to 4 4 to 5 under learning system uh start date end date we have and then you want to put a time also yeah uh, suppose it was from 10 to 2 or 2 to 4 whatever put it i mean schedule learning schedule yeah. no uh, i think for a particular learning right uh, the timing Yeah, for particular learning for that course. Okay, nice. Okay. So uh, it looks kind of okay, na? So far, uh, we have the employees, then we have the PTOs, then we have the courses, and then we have the learnings. Okay, so we have quite a few objects here right now. Four of these objects. So uh, we know what is our uh, task for tomorrow, right? we have to think deeper into this we have to think a lot more into this and your only you know job is to understand the data model that's it nothing else that you have to do the rest everything is transactional right 
So all the thought process that you have to do is on the data model. Think of this. If you can think, you can design anything on Salesforce. So don't worry about how to design this in Salesforce. For designing all these things in Salesforce, I will just <coughs> give you another tutorial which I want you to work on today. Okay, and uh, keep thinking on this uh, data model thing. I'm gonna, you know, put this uh, in an email and I'm gonna share this with you guys. And then you can expand further on this. Just give me a moment. Yesterday, didn't I send you an email? I sent an email, no? Yesterday. Okay. So Here it is. Yes, yes, yes. I got it. Import. Account files for import. Yes. Okay. Scope. for interview without muting microphone three four five right so two three four five Ankit your email ID is Ankit Figu at redicmail.com is that correct? Yeah, okay. okay, done. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I have everyone else's email ID. Yesterday you guys shared that. I was just a little confused on Ankit's email ID. Okay, so I have already shared the data model thing with you guys. Uh, I think you all have received that. I am sharing a tutorial also with you all. Okay. Uh, 
okay uh, let's not get into the tutorial today i'll share the tutorial today and tomorrow don't get into the tutorial today you will end up confusing yourself with two things uh, just work on this uh, you know app designing data model just go and spend time on the app designing data model try and understand what all fields so uh, the scope is defined uh, let me just share my screen for a minute what i want you to do is uh, you know the scope right scope is defined now try to extend it okay we will see who comes up with the best solution second thing what i want you to do is uh, try to add more things into this okay and corresponding to each field name that you see try to put a data type like name will be text date of birth will be date title will be text this way okay so try to put the data type wherever you are not very you know clear what should be the data type leave it there but for other fields just put the data types okay so that is a, another thing that you need to understand what sort of a data type should be given to the field okay then only you can create the fields okay so that's going to be your activity and uh, i'm going to you know uh, see you all tomorrow same